Call 3, practice paper 5, question number 9. We've got that a liquid cools, and its temperature, big T, related to time, little t, which is measured in minutes, and temperature measured in degrees centigrade. Uh, time for which it's been cooling, cooling is given by this equation. Find the temperature when the liquid started to cool. Well, when the liquid started to cool, we can say that T equals naught. So if we substitute T equals naught into there, we get 50E raised to the power of naught plus 25. E to the naught is 1, even without the calculator, so 50 times 1 is 50. So there's the answer. Not worth a lot of marks, because in fact you should be able to do all this in your head and the examiner's not going to be fussed if you can because it's only one smart. The examiner actually could have used the word state which implies that it's one of those things that you can just write it down but uh, I'm happy with going through the working out. Move on. Question 9 part B. So here's our equation connecting temperature big T with time past little t we're asked to sketch the graph of T against T. Now, sketching the graph, as I've shown you before in this exam paper, doesn't have to be that accurate, as long as you get the general shape right and any important points, such as where the graphs cut either the X or the Y axis, or both axes. There's not likely to be a lot of marks for this anyway, but how much of this you can do in your head and just draw it straight off, that's entirely up to you. I'm going to do this step by step. So let's consider this and this. Instead of the x and y axis, this is going to be the little t-axis and the big t-axis. So we need to look at how these pieces of information transform our basic graph. What does that 50 do? What does that minus 0.1 do? What does that 25 do? Let's draw the basic exponential graph. Now I know it's the t and the t axis, but we're going to, for now, call it the x, y axis. So if we say that's a sketch of y equals e to the x, that's our basic exponential function shape passing through at 0.1. Let's first off see what happens with this point 1. This will be a rough sketch of the graph of y equals e to the 0.1 of x. So that's what effect that has. Now what about this minus? That minus actually is going to reflect in the y-axis. So in other words, it's going to look something like this. So this is going to be y equals e to the minus 0.1 of x. What's that 50 going to do? Well, that's actually going to make it pass through 50 and be a lot steeper. So it's going to end up looking something like this. A lot steeper. But this is just a sketch. So that is going to be the graph of y equals 50 of e to the minus 0.1 of x. Plus 25 is going to get, take that graph and move it up the page 25 more places. So that's 50 and that's 75. So this graph is going to move up the page to end up there. Now, in fact, for this question, the examiner can be perfectly happy with just seeing a t-axis, a t-axis, and a graph basically of that shape, showing that it passes through 75 and labelled accordingly. Because, as I said, it's only worth a couple of marks anyway. One mark is going to be for showing that it goes through 75 
and one mark is going to be for the basic shape of course going the right way and not the wrong way and that's your two marks. In the exam you might find it necessary to work it out bit by bit because in fact I would have to I expect but it depends how good you are at these things. That's question 9 part B. Visit www.masstutor.biz to buy the set of DVDs on Core 3, Set 2, Papers 4, 5 and 6, because this question actually comes from Paper 5, so you can get yourself your own copy of Paper 5, work through not just this question 9, but the whole of the paper, and then view the whole of the DVD with the solutions and the marking schemes for all the papers. So I hope to see you after you've visited, or hear from you, after you've visited www.mathtutor.biz.